welcome students uh, so this is the first introductory lecture for advanced wireless communications so this semester i'll be teaching you advanced wireless communication and digital communication those of you uh, had attended my microcontrollers module in your stage 3 uh, most of you know me uh, so my name is Avishek Nag and and I I would have been happy to to be standing in front of you all face to face and deliver this module but unfortunately this year the situation is different and we will go online uh, and we will be teaching through this video lecture so this is the first lecture uh, of many to come so let's uh, let's proceed so this module will mainly uh, include uh, these topics as you can see uh, we will go through wireless LAN we will go through the IEEE 802.15 wireless personal area network standards so IEEE uh, which which is the which is the abbreviation for the Institute of Electronics and Electrical Engineers. It's a it's a global organization of electronic and in electrical engineers uh, like you and me. Uh, they <clears throat> they actually regulate these standards. So whenever there are new technologies, they come up with some set up rules to to define the path of that technology progression um, so they have several standards like this so wireless LAN also has a standard which is IEEE 802.11 so IEEE 802.15 is the wireless personal area network standards we will briefly go through that then we will cover cellular wireless communication fundamentals uh, so the cell phone that we all are using uh, follows uh, the concepts behind this uh, cellular wireless communications so we will go through those we will uh, go through some advanced topics like software defined and cognitive radios we will we will also learn the differences between 2G technology, 3G technology, 4G, which is also called LTE, and and we all are talking about 5G recently. So we will cover a little bit of 5G also. That's a that's a relatively advanced technology and quite new. Uh, so we will we will talk a little bit about it because it might be uh, very advanced for for the scope of this module but still it's good to know new technologies and what's happening uh, so we will cover a little bit of 5g also in terms of your grading so uh, as as i said this year we are we are doing a complete online delivery so your assessments will be mostly continuous so uh, and and 60 percent of your final grade will depend on this continuous assessment so we will do assignments quizzes and so on and i will announce uh, the exact format of this quizzes or assignments and when will this happen how these will be conducted i will announce them uh, as time progresses and as we as we get close to uh, having one of these assessments so i will announce mostly in brightspace and i might also uh, email you or or i might use some other media so we will we will discuss those later uh, when when the semester progresses a little bit and then there will be a group project so that will uh, that will be 40 percent of your 
uh, of your final grade and the group project has been a part of this module uh, for the last three years so we will continue with that and uh, I will talk a little more details about this group project after a few minutes after we progress through a couple of slides. Uh, the grade scale that I will be using is a linear grade scale that has been introduced uh, by UCD in their new academic regulations released last year. Um, and by that what I mean is that I will be using this, this middle grade scale where your pass mark is 40% and uh, to get an A, you have to score more than 90%. To get an A+, plus, you have to score uh, more than 95%. So this is the scale that I will be using this semester. And this is the book that uh, I follow for most of my lecture notes and slides. So this is, uh, this is Wireless Communications and Networks by William Stallings. And this book can be freely downloaded from the link given here. The, the lectures and the assessments will be only based on my lecture notes. However, uh, this year, since we are doing remote online um, delivery of, of this module, uh, and I cannot be physically there to address all your doubts and and all the gaps in your understanding that might occur i would suggest and i would i would actually strongly advise to get a copy of this book either a pdf or 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 a hard copy and um, and go through this book uh, as and when required okay so I will try my best to explain you everything and my slides and notes along with these videos will be probably enough but uh, in case uh, you need to consult the book uh, feel free to do so. Um, so now yeah coming to the project so <clears throat> so the class project um, Usually the pattern of this project is like this. So it's a it's a group project. So we'll have three to four students in each group. Uh, so this year I will be I will be preferring five students per groups because uh, I think the class size is bigger this year. So uh, I think I'll, I'll go for five students per group and uh, it will be a research project on an advanced topic in wireless communication. So I have a list of topics so I can I can give you some topic or you can propose your own topic and we can have some discussion to finalize the topic. Okay. And before finalizing the topic, I think we should finalize the groups. So, um, so I will probably uh, randomly select five students and form those groups, um, or, or rather, you know, um, according to the class li class list, uh, I will I will form the groups using some some algorithm let's say uh, or you can do one thing you yourself can create those groups and email me with the with the names so like you form the groups of five among yourselves and then you choose a group leader or anyone from that group uh, can email me with the name of the uh, group members and then I can take a note of that. So that can also happen. So it's 
up to you so so tell me uh, in the in the next live discussion session that we are going to have which which one you prefer okay and and then i will give you a week time from that point to to form the groups and then get back to me because this uh, this needs to be done uh, quickly because uh, we have to then finalize the topics and then um, you have to start the project um, otherwise I'm afraid you might not be able to finish the project on time so so we will have more discussion on this um, uh, later uh, maybe in the live discussion session that we are going to have uh, sometime soon so moving on um, yeah so as you all know by now that we have a very strict plagiarism policy and I would uh, I would not encourage you to plagiarize anything any of your reports any of your projects any of your um, any of your assignments uh, because uh, the consequences are are very hard so so this is not um, this is not a situation where either you or myself want to want to fall so we we should make all efforts to stay away from this so <clears throat> so yeah so we are we are studying wireless communication and i think uh, it it will be nice to go through some of the history uh, like just to just to uh, be just to be in the in the right you know mindset and and just to be able to appreciate uh, why you are studying wireless communication or how how this has transformed our lives so uh, way back in 1896 uh, italian scientist guglielmo marconi and also indian scientist jesse bose uh, they almost at the same time within a few months difference demonstrated the first wireless communication system so so it was the first ever demonstration of wireless telegraphy and it it had uh, high transmission power more than 200 kilowatts and uh, it, they used long waves transmitter so basically uh, millimeter wave transmission was used and uh, it's a, it's a, it's a irony that now after so many years uh, while we are trying to set up 5G mobile communication systems uh, talks are going on or rather um, systems have been implemented already with millimeter wave communication so the first wireless communication was based on millimeter waves uh, and now after 125 years we are again using that for the latest 5G wireless communication systems. Um, so what is millimeter wave and all these things uh, we, will, we will get into those when we study the electromagnetic spectrum. Um, basically the frequency and wavelength are inversely related so if you are using a high frequency band for transmitting your wireless signals uh, then uh, you are uh, you are automatically using a longer wavelength okay so so 
that's what is meant by long wave transmission or let's say millimeter wave uh, on on comparison to that we have microwaves and, and many other we will get into those uh, details uh, soon so in uh, in the 1907 then the first commercial transatlantic connections were established and, and they used to have very high, very huge uh, base stations in uh, 1915 the first wireless voice transmission happened between New York and San Francisco in uh, 1920 short webs were discovered by Marconi again which could get reflected at the ionosphere and this actually led the foundation of the radio um, and then uh, in 1926 uh, the first ever uh, train phone was set up on the on the Hamburg Berlin line in Germany uh, then in 1928 uh, many television broadcast trials happened so there also uh, we were using wireless communication the first ever frequency modulation was invented by Armstrong in 1933. Then in 1958 and 1972, uh, Germany had uh, A nets and B nets. So these were some early instances of uh, wireless communication networks. In uh, 1979, in the Scandinavian countries, they had a system called NMT. And then in 82, the GSM era started. So this is basically the earliest uh, technology that later on led the foundation of, uh, of mobile phones. Um, so GSM was in Europe and the similar system called AMPS was started in America in 1983. Uh, in 84, the CT1 standard for cordless telephones came up in Europe. Then in 86, C nets came in Germany. So you, you saw A nets and B nets uh, in the 1950s and 70s. Then in 86, C nets came up in Germany. And then in 91, we had a we had a technology called DCT, so Digital European Cordless Telephone. Um, and then in 1992 the start of GSM happened and in 94 we have again ENETs in Germany and, and so on. So you see that many new technologies uh, gradually evolved over the years and you can see some familiar names like wireless LAN. So, so these things are all there today and we have we have probably everything uh, and, and the technologies that we are using today are so advanced and, and we have we have so many things um, that we sometimes forget to appreciate that uh, these has been you know the results of uh, immense technological developments over the last hundred years or more so that thing we have to appreciate and that's why we are going through this history of wireless communication so these days we all have gsm we have wireless lan we have everything but but let's say 97 the wireless lan came up so before 97 imagine um, like how the world was without these technologies so that's the point that you 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 need to appreciate in 1999 we had this uh, standardization of wireless lands uh, in 2000 the gsm got a bit enhanced and uh, higher data rates came up uh, in 2001 the start of the first 3g systems happened then um, in 2002 we had the wireless LAN hotspots uh, in 2003 we had UMTS that started in Germany WiMAX and other DSL uh, 
um, sorry, WiMAX as, a, as an alternative to DSL came up in 2005. The first Zigbee products came up in 2005 uh, and so on. And, and the story continues, as you see, uh, the story really continues uh, and we are still you know innovating we are constantly having new things we have we have the iphone we have the netbooks uh, we have tablets uh, and and many things and all of them are using uh, wireless communication technologies and and you are you are going to study some of them in this module so <clears throat> So cellular telephone, um, it started as a replacement to the wired telephone, uh, very obvious. And the early generations offered only voice, uh, mostly voice and, and very limited data. So nowadays, uh, you use your phone for browsing, for uh, playing games, watching movies, and, and, and you do so many things with your phones. But the early generations of cellular telephones they didn't have all those uh, uh, all those facilities uh, but in those days uh, when the, the the cellular phone came as a replacement for the wired telephone it was a marvel in itself like you could you could move freely with a piece of phone in your pocket and you could stay connected through your friends and family so that itself was a what's a, that itself was a amazing technology those days uh, and then nowadays for the current third and fourth generation mobile communication systems we have so many other features like you know you have the apps you have you have video streaming you have social networking you have mobile web you have e-commerce on your phones uh, so many things so we are we are living in a in a really enriched uh, time I would say the impact of the wireless systems uh, are obviously they are very profound they have they have impacted probably all uh, stages of our life and all uh, uh, all levels of the society uh, it has uh, made the world a small place so it has it has shrunk the world we could stay always on and always connected and and it has changed the way people communicate so so we we are in the era of social networking and uh, we can we we talk to each other when we are in front of each other but then we can also uh, communicate and interact and and and, and you know uh, be socially engaged with the with the help of social networking thanks to uh, thanks to these technologies and so let's um, let's look into um, the technology timeline and also uh, the different uh, different frequencies that that these technology uh, operate on okay so <clears throat> so let's say in the 1930s and 1940s uh, you have shortwave radio and uh, excuse me for the typo here this should be shortwave so shortwave radio uh, you have basically those are in the high frequency region and and between 3 megahertz to 30 megahertz black and white tv in the 1950s um, fm radio mobile two-way radio so these all came up in the 1950s and 60s and they were again around this 30 megahertz to 300 megahertz window the color tv was around 300 megahertz also then we have um, microwave uh, uh, and then satellite communications those are in the 3 gigahertz to 30 gigahertz window uh, cellular phone is basically in the 300 megahertz uh, to, to 1 gigahertz zone uh, which came up in 1990s 
and then in the 2000s we have uh, all these new technologies that came up like 3G, 4G, uh, the Internet of Things, uh, 5G and, and so on. And, <clears throat> and in this course or in this module, our main focus will be uh, on, on this, these things. So whatever is within this blue uh, zone. So we will we'll study cellular phone, we'll study Internet of Things, we'll study Zigbee, we'll study Wi-Fi, 3G and 4G uh, and, and, and a bit of 5G. So um, the global cellular network, um, it, it's, it's growing every day actually. Uh, it had 11 million users in 1990. Now it has over 7 billion. Um, the mobile devices are very convenient. It's, uh, it's location aware and it's probably the only economical form of communication in some places. Uh, so the question is where, in which places, and, and the obvious answer is uh, basically in sparsely populated areas or rural areas because it's very expensive to set up wired telephone lines or, or optical fibers um, through, through areas where you have very less uh, users. Okay. So the return on the investment for for this telecommunication <coughs> companies uh, is very low if you have less number of users using the infrastructure so <coughs> wireless communication is much more economical in those places however in cities in, in densely populated cities let's say like beijing or shanghai uh, this is not a problem so you can have all those high-speed uh, optical fiber lines providing you high-speed broadband. <clears throat> so, so as it is evident uh, uh, from the discussion so far that the cellular networks they they came up and 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 evolved through many generations. So we we term them into different <clears throat> different generations so 1g is the first generation of the cellular networks and that had only analog communication uh, systems in 2g the first ever digital voice was supported uh, in 3g the the move was a little bit towards uh, data services so so 3g was packet based uh, a packet switch based network uh, for 4g <clears throat> we had further enhancements uh, we had we had OFDM and, and that could enhance the spectral efficiency and can support higher data rates uh, for high mobility users and as well as low mobility use users and uh, for 5G, even one step, one step further, uh, you can support up to 20 gigabits of peak data rate and, and the mobility that can be supported is up to 500 kilometers per hour. So as you see, as, as the generations progress, the technologies evolve and we, uh, as an users, uh, we get enhanced features either in terms of high capacity or high speed or high mobility uh, and, and so on. And uh, as, the, as the networks have evolved over different generations, so has the devices. So the mobile devices has also uh, evolved. So in the 1990s, you had just uh, uh, mobile phones which were which which could only support voice communication and which were larger in size and were not so slim as today's smartphones and then uh, over the years things have improved technology has uh, has has progressed and we have you know many things 
many features in our phones today we have uh, multi megabit internet accesses we have mobile apps we have high megapixel cameras uh, we have uh, access to different types of wireless networks like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, 3G, 4G, 5G. We have several sensors on our phone. We can use our phones to track our health. Um, it can track how many steps you have taken while you are walking and, and, and so on. So the phones or the mobile devices today have become very much versatile and uh, and this is the key to to the fact that how many people interact with the world around them uh, so so this this is a this is a revolution that we we are we are facing uh, in terms of technology um, and then uh, of course we can uh, we can have better use of the spectrum uh, the costs have decreased uh, so the amount of price you are paying uh, versus the the features that your phone provides if you do an analysis of that then we are paying much less than uh, than we used to pay 20 years back uh, so it, it, our phones have enhanced displays and input capabilities. Uh, we have tablets that provide balance between smartphones and PCs. Um, we, we can have long distance uh, technologies like cellular 3G and 4G. Uh, we have local area technologies like Wi-Fi. We have short distance technologies like Bluetooth and Zigbee and, and, and so on. And uh, talking about the future, so so we have a lot of uh, things that are uh, that are that are evolving still, and uh, uh, the technologies that we we use are constantly emerging, and new innovations are coming to the market, and and and, and this is basically the way we are moving forward. So we have. Uh, we, we were talking about uh, 1G, 2G, 3G and so on. Now we talk about the Internet of Things. So basically the devices themselves, they, they interact with each other and, and they have applications to many domains like healthcare, disaster recovery, in security and surveillance, in the education sector, in manufacturing, um, everywhere. Uh, there are new ways of information decimation, so we have uh, data mining and decision support, so our devices are becoming more automated, more intelligent, uh, so we are, we are applying AI to design uh, our devices and we, we are incorporating AI within the devices, so they are becoming more intelligent, they can make use of the data around them and, and, and try to make uh, intelligent decisions and and eventually there would be a time where the devices could interact in their own forms of social networking so so yeah so we have so many um, so many new things so these slides are not um, exhaustive so we can still talk about many other things that are not captured in this in these slides even when i am talking about the new future technologies um, right now there are thousands of new innovations getting happened at this particular moment throughout the world so every day every minute there is something new uh, to talk about um, and then uh, finally, we we have we have the future networks which are based on five G and beyond technologies, um, and then they have like uh, they have like technologies like network densification, uh, device centric architectures, massive MIMO millimeter wave technologies as I said at the very beginning of this lecture 
and, and, and many, many other things. So you can see I have put a dot, dot, dot here because this discussion can go on and on. Like we have so many new things uh, that are getting innovated. Now, uh, talking about wireless communication, so there obviously uh, there are some issues with wireless communication. Uh, so the, the, there, there are different limitations that wireless technologies face and that's mainly driven by the uh, by the wireless channel. So the wireless channel um, through which the signals propagate from the transmitter to the receiver that consists of a line of sight which means that I can see my, my uh, receiver let's say um, or there is a if you draw a straight line from the transmitter to the receiver uh, there would be no, no obstacles in between so that's called the line of sight but not all wireless communication can happen through line of sight because uh, that is not that is not possible so uh, so apart from this line of sight there are there are um, cases where your wireless signal is getting reflected, diffracted around the edges of objects, getting scattered by atmospheric particles. Uh, they, are, they are getting transmitted through different objects, through trees, through buildings, and then it is reaching the receiver. And because of this, there are a lot of, uh, lot of issues, a lot of impairments in the wireless signal so they get distorted and that's that's the problem with wireless communication so so as you can see uh, in in this uh, diagram here so <coughs> you have you have a antenna here that is uh, uh, transmitting the wireless signal okay so and then here is your mobile phone where you are receiving the wireless signal and then the blue line is the direct line of sight between let's say the the transmitting antenna and your mobile phone but then um, if you if you see that the same signal the wireless signal it reaches you directly but then it may be getting transmitted through this building okay and and then there are other components so there are there are reflected copies of the same signal that can reach you reflected from this mountain let's say from another building it can get diffracted from the edge of this building so multiple copies of the same signal actually actually um, reach you okay so let's say um, if you see the time domain representation of the signal so let's say this is your direct wave but then you also get uh, a copy of the same wave that that is getting reflected diffracted uh, reflected again and then if you add all of them together then you get this resultant wave which may not look exactly similar to the original wave okay so if you see the frequency spectrum this is the spectrum of the original signal which is nice and clean but then when you look at the uh, composed wave that is composed from the multiple copies of the same signal refracted reflected and scattered together then you have a distorted spectrum so this doesn't exactly resemble the original uh, original signal so this is the these two are not equivalent so uh, and that's the problem so you receive a copy which has a lot of imperfections and because of this you as an user uh, you 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 can uh, find out when you are calling 
on the phone you might face these difficulties your call might get uh, dropped or it might get uh, distorted you may not be able to hear every word that is spoken on the phone and, and this is the reason so so um, so we have we have ways to combat these problems uh, so we can we can do many things so let's say we can use some advanced modulation techniques um, we can we can do error control coding uh, we can do adaptive modulation and coding by uh, dynamically adjusting the system to current channel conditions. Uh, we can do equalization, which is basically counteracting the effects of the uh, multipath channel. Uh, we can use uh, multiple input, multiple output antennas. Uh, so they can send parallel streams of data and then we choose the strongest signal out of those parallel streams. Uh, we can do several other techniques like uh, direct sequence spread spectrum or orthogonal frequency division multiplexing and, and so on. So few of these uh, few of these techniques we will study in this module or or we will study in our digital communication module. So uh, at that time, we'll be able to appreciate like how these uh, technologies can help in combating the problems of wireless communication channel. And then there are other issues with wireless as well. So there are several management difficulties. Uh, so in terms of um, spectrum regulation, so every country's government uh, more or less dictate how the spectrum will be used and then they sell uh, the spectrum to different stakeholders okay so um, so these can create a lot of regulatory and, and, and political and and, uh, and, and, and many other uh, issues uh, and then um, there are also um, like between the companies that manufactured different devices uh, to be used for wireless communication uh, they might face some difficulties in terms of management um, because uh, the products that are manufactured by different companies may not be compatible okay uh, they may not be a, be interoperable so we need to have a common standard so that the products can interoperate. So these are also uh, some issues that, uh, that, that are very common uh, while we are using wireless communication or, or any communication technology uh, in general. So uh, with this, uh, I will stop here this introductory lecture and, and we will continue in the next video with the with the other topics of wireless communications so i'll stop here today thank you